Hmm. What's up, money geeks? Mr. V here. Welcome to another video, guys. So in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about my top five software as a service companies. They call them SaaS. So S A A S. Software as a service. So uh, before we get started, guys, if you're new to the channel, we we'll talk about how to earn money, how to save money, how to invest and build wealth. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. So um, top five software as a service companies. A lot of these companies um, you're probably aware of, or maybe you probably don't have any idea. Um, and for me, the reason why I know a lot of these companies is because I work in technology. So I know these companies, um, a lot of them again, are companies that operate behind the scenes that a lot of people don't even know or see in real life so um, you're probably asking yourself but what is software as a service right um, you have a ton of companies that you go and subscribe and use their service uh, maybe on a monthly basis on a quarterly basis uh, by um, annually or annually basis you just subscribe and when you, you don't feel like using them anymore you you know you terminate your subscription um, these companies they it used to be where they would package a software and and ship it to you and you install it on your pc or on your macbook and then use it for the life of that software then they would send you updates uh just periodically and you can update your the software and get new features but today the way these companies have gone around that and which is smart from a business standpoint is they they get you to subscribe and pay a monthly fee to use it. Um, it. It helps the company cut costs because they don't have to package softwares and send them out. They can just do one quick build and push it out and it goes to all their customers at the same time, which is awesome. So um, that's. I just want to give you guys that kind of context as far as what I mean by software as a service. So let's jump on the computer and take a look at my top five um, software as a service companies. So let's go. The first one here on my list is MongoDB ticket symbol MDB. Uh, MongoDB engages in the development and provision of all general purpose databases. So databases for any application that you see run that it's online that people use for maybe um, you just creating um, an account online and having a username and password, all that information gets stored on the back end in a database. So uh, MongoDB kind of provides that kind of service. Um, so let's just walk through it. So as of, um, you know, when I was recording this video, the, um, the stock price was actually uh, 201. Um, and as you can see here, um, Let's walk through it. And your 52 week high is 243. So it's not too far from its uh, 52 week high. Um, and then the 52 week low is $93. We, that would have been a perfect time to jump in, in um, and, and buy it. So um, this company is it has a really good reputation in, in the tech space for people that are really into tech um, as far as the back end, as far as databases, um, which is which is really good. And most people wouldn't even know about this company if you don't really work in tech because when you go online, you don't see them. They don't have a flashy front end that people see um, like most companies do. So, um, but on the, on the back end, they have a solid foundation. So it's walk through it. So if you if you look at it, and just one thing, just to be clear, this is uh, these companies are companies that don't pay dividends just yet. They don't pay any dividends. So if you're looking for a dividend paying stock, these are just growth stocks. Um, again, then something that I want to call out here, just for for a lot of people to know uh, before you actually invest in a company like this, you might see that. There are, as you can see, their, their PE ratio here is uh, 55. So that's a very, um, I mean, in the, in the sense of, you know, investing, that PE ratio is really, really low. Um, I'm going to say really, really, but it's low, which um, it, it, it could mean one of two things, right? Um, it, it could mean that this company is not doing good. It could mean that um, this company is heading towards bankruptcy. But um, a lot of these tech companies, the reason why, you don't see them having a, a, a like a really good uh, PE is because they reinvest all of their money back into the company. Um, that's why they don't even pay dividends just to increase the growth of that company. So hopefully down the road, they can start paying dividends. So that is number um, one on my list. Uh, 
uh, MongoDB. Okay, let's jump to number two. Number two here is Smartsheet. Um, Smartsheet engages in the design and development of cloud-based platform for work management. Um, so for, 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 for people that, you know, do projects and stuff like that, um, manage your calendar and all that stuff online, uh, Smartsheet provides a really good platform for you to be able to do that. And again, um, these are companies that a lot of people don't really just see, like, um, don't have that face uh, reputation. When I mean, look, you, when you see a company, you see, you go online, you see some of the stuff that they do, people can relate to that. Um, when you have a physical product that you can actually see, use, people can relate to that. But these guys are, again, like I said, this is our software as a service, our SaaS companies. So let's take a look at the numbers here. Uh, when I was recording this video, uh, it was uh, a little bit just over $47 a share. Their 52 week high is $60 and some change. 52 week low is 30. Again, that would have been a good point for you to get in. Um, PE ratio is minus 52. Uh, again, just uh, doesn't mean that this is a bad company. Doesn't mean that they're going bankrupt. It just means that they, they are actually reinvesting um, um, a lot of their money back into the company for growth. Um, again, if you know about like the tech tech companies, that's what they do. They take that money. They don't pay any dividends. They reinvest it and just continue to grow. That's why this is a, is a these are all growth companies and not dividend paying companies. Hopefully, down the road they'll start paying um, some dividends. So let's move on to number three. Number three here. Is is ticker symbol DDOG, um, Data Doc. Um, so they engage in the development uh, of monitoring and analytics platforms for developers. So if you're a developer, um, you probably know these companies um, and you probably know Datadog. Um, again, these are, um, if you look at their PE ratio, this one here is so, uh, the PE ratio is so high. Um, and again, um, high PE ratio could mean that maybe this company is overvalued. Um, but it, for, for companies that are reinvesting money back into the company, um, I, I don't mind that for tech companies. So you do your own research before investing in this company. Don't just jump in and invest and say, Mr. V said, these are good companies. I like them. Doesn't mean that you have to, you have to do your own research. So let's move on to number four. Number four here is one that, uh, everybody knows already. Um, ticket symbol ZM zoom. Um, this stock is, um, just on, on crazy, crazy fire. Um, again, it look, look, if you've got a PE ratio there, it's crazy. Um, it's, it's just so high. Um, so in the question is, is zoom a company to invest in from a growth standpoint? Um, I would say yes. Um, because if you, if you look back here where, uh, Zoom had their 52 week low was $60 and their 52 week high now is sitting at 239, which is, I mean, so they've really bit their 52 week high. So, um, it, it, to me, Zoom is one of the ones that on this list, um, has a ton of potential, but very risky. Um, at least, is this group continue to, uh, is it going to continue after COVID is over? Because with the onset of COVID, a lot of people jumped onto Zoom and they picked up a lot of, of users. So now is when COVID is over, people go back to work, go back to the offices. Is, is Zoom still going to be, um, you know, having the same ad, uh, amount of growth? So it's just something for you to be careful about. I, I personally think that Zoom still has a, a tremendous amount of upside. Um, there's other companies that are a, a, a competition to, to Zoom, but Zoom has actually distinguished itself. So Facebook came out with their own, um, uh, you know, video conferencing. But people, when you think about Facebook, you're not thinking about video conferencing. You're thinking about connecting with people and doing stuff. So when you think, um, I, I think um, Microsoft came out with one. And again, I think about Microsoft, I think about my PC, I think about Windows operating system and stuff like Skype. Uh, I'm not thinking about, you know, just dedicated for uh, video conferencing like Zoom has d d done um, over the years. They've actually just like zone in, pick a niche and become an expert at that niche, which is um, awesome. So, uh, and last but not the least here is ticker symbol SHOP. Shopify. I've actually spoken about Shopify here on the channel. Uh, I'm going to hook that video up here so you can definitely go check it out. When, when we talked about Shopify here on the channel, I think it was about, it was about $400 at that point. Um, so that was like two months ago. And look at that. It's gone from 400 now to uh, over $800. Uh, 52 week high here is four, um, eight eighty eight. 52 week low is 281. Man, that would have been a good place to go in here. 
um, PE ratio is now negative here again still just showing that this company um, is you know it can mean like it's losing a ton of money which is not the case the, the difference is that they are reinvesting all that money back into the company they don't pay any dividends and they're just trying to in, in, increase their growth so I personally see uh, um, Shopify breaking a thousand dollars and in heading for fifteen hundred even to two thousand dollars in the next two or three years that is you know within the realm of, of, of Shopify because what they've done is they did stealing people from Etsy um, over to Shopify because Etsy takes a cut but when you create a Shopify store you only do a monthly payment um, and that's it and you 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 make let's say you use their their basic plan which is $29 a month whatever sales you make on that platform is your money to keep but Etsy takes a cut of every sale that you make so a lot of people are just um, migrating from Etsy over to Shopify to create their own shops and take control so there you go guys those are my top five software as a service companies let me know in the comment section do you know any of these companies do you have any of them in your portfolio definitely let me know again in the comment section and as always guys like share subscribe youtube tells me that 90 percent of you guys watching haven't already subscribed to my channel it would make my day if you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and as always stay motivated